Welcome to the Special Delivery Podcast. I am your host, Special. And on this show, I like to do one of two things. Either I'm delivering you brand new music that's dropped, or I'm sitting down with an artist to break down everything you don't know and should know about their latest project. And this episode is with rapper Big Poo. It was almost a lost episode, but I found it. This is from back in March when I was in North Carolina for Dreamville Fest. And a couple audio notes on this one. It was like a crazy thunder hailstorm, so you might hear that in the background. And also, I had to do a couple cuttings, but I played it for some people. They said it was okay. So here it is. <laughs> On this episode, we talk about his latest project, RPM, and we get into everything from working with focus just directly on every single track and the different kind of writing exercises that focus had him do we talk about every single feature different things like song length and rewriting verses and just so much more so let's get into it what's going on everybody it's the one and only the only one rapper big poo Yay, Rapper Big Poo is here. How are you? I'm good. I can't complain. Enjoying these uh, four seasons and <laughs> two days weather that North Carolina is having right now. You're used to it, though. I am. It's still weird, but I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely used to it. I mean, last week we had snow, rain, oh. and it was about 60 degrees by the end of all of it. So all in one day. Yeah. I am so thankful that I missed the snow. Thank you, North <laughs> Carolina, for giving me that gift because the rain enough is like... Oh, buddy, but snow, you know, California, we don't we don't know what to do. We're it like, looked cool. It didn't stick. So okay. it was it looked cool coming down and then it was water by the time it hit the ground. So. Okay. See, you would know those clarifications. I don't even <laughs> I, I hear snow. I'm just like, oh, shit, snow. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. We got to talk all about RPM. OK. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just everything that we love. Real rap shit storytelling the features are crazy the beats like it's just everything let's talk about how long it took i remember you saying it had been on your whiteboard for two years yeah it was it was on the whiteboard it went on the whiteboard in 2014 actually and as an idea focus presented the idea to me and i was down but we both had other things going on and um during the making of Compton, Dr. Dre's Compton album, I was going out to the West Coast often and we were at Dre's house in Malibu. We were about to work on a record and then Focus was like, hey man, we still gotta do RPM. Yeah. We still gotta do it. And I was like, hey man, I'm ready. You know, I know you working on this, but when you finish, let's let's go. And it still took a couple years after that for us to finally, finally get it done. But once we actually got started, like for real on it, it probably took three to four months, nice. but it was just the getting, not only getting started, but getting into a rhythm. Mm. And it only took that long because I was on and off the road with uh, DJ and Falut at the time as well. So, But the rhythm is incredible. Like, it's so concise. It flows so well. Shout out to Focus dot dot dot. Focus <laughs> dot dot dot. Yes, indeed. He really killed that. As far as the concept and the way it flowed, was that a conscious thing where you guys like, okay, we want this to really almost like a mixtape like really just flow through was that a conscious thing or just kind of happened i mean that could have been an idea focus had like i was just doing records i was just concentrating on picking the beats that i preferred and then he was doing a lot of producing even though we weren't in the same room with making sure that the concepts were right and he wanted me to go outside of my usual pattern of you know how I form rhymes or you know rhyme patterns and so he was very meticulous with that and I kind of let him direct it this is like since little brother this is the first time I let someone take a solo project and really have the wheel <laughs> like I was in the passenger seat just okay you want me to do that okay you want me to do that I was just responsible for making sure that I delivered as far as like my writing so i took my time with the writing normally i'll just get something i'll just go there it is but i would start something come back a couple days later go finish it scratch some wood i had come back another day so i was really taking my time to be meticulous with with what i was putting down because i wanted this was my first project in like two and a half years almost three years and i wanted you know from the writing perspective i wanted it to be potent and then I let focus pretty much handle the rest of it. 
Mm. That's what I was going to ask too. Like writing for so long in your legendary career, how has your writing process kind of changed? Especially too with the development of technology. You know, some people write in their phones now. Like what does that look like for you? Uh, it, it varies. Sometimes I write in the phone. Sometimes I write on paper. I still like the feeling of writing on paper. For me, I think going back to paper after writing in my phone for so long mm. forced me to really, I don't know why, but it forced me to really think about and look at what I was saying. So even when I went back to the phone, I started carrying over what I was doing on paper. So now I'll have something and I'll come back to it constantly. Like, can I say this better? Can I word this different? Can I use different words? So that's part of it. Now, I don't know how I got in this habit. I have to ride around with the instrumental in my car and I use my voice memo to just, you know, say various lines and then I'll come and work on it later. It just depends on the mode for me, but I mean, it's definitely changed a lot because like I said, when I first started all the way up until probably home sweet home, probably till then, it was just almost like a blitzkrieg. Like I, like I go for it when I sat down to write something, I feel incomplete if I didn't finish the song when I sat down to write it. But now it is like if it take me a week, it take me a week. If it take me three weeks, it take me three weeks. I just take my time with it now. I don't pump out as much product as I used to so I can afford to take my time with it. That's super dope because I have a lot of conversations on this podcast about just the microwave shit and the fact that people are just putting shit out like crazy. So for you to evolve in a completely different way to where it's like, no, I actually take my time now. I think that that's so important because it's getting rarer and rarer and it's just cool to see. I be hearing stories, people be like, oh, I got 200 songs in the vault. And I'll be like, I know probably 195 of them sound like trash. Or they sound like the same damn song 195 times because I just learned like when you do so much in a short period of time, everything definitely starts to sound like the next thing. You know, even one of my artists, he's working on his first album and he let me hear some tracks. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you got like four songs talking about the same thing. Pick the best one. Scrap the rest of them. (laughs) Like when you're young, I don't think you think about that as much. But as I've gotten older, I think about those things like, yo, I don't want three songs talking about the same thing. If I'm going to talk about going to the club, one song. If I'm going to talk about being at home watching Netflix, one song. (laughs) And so I think for me, it it was just developing as a songwriter and developing as a person allowed me to really sit back and see. And that time off, them two, three years off, really allowed me to really put in perspective like what I was doing and, and how I wanted to approach it whenever I decided to do something else. That's actually something I want to bring up, too. There's so many different topics that you touch on on this project. It's incredible. Do you have a favorite and something that was either super important to you or something that you'd wanted to talk about for a while? Now, I think the main thing I wanted to do on this project was kind of get back to my storytelling roots. Like, I'm a storyteller by nature. I grew up loving Nas for the fact that he painted pictures with his words and that's what I tried to do with Home Sweet Home and Words Paint Pictures was start going that way. So when I did this project, that's what I wanted to do. And I relayed that to focus before we even really started. I was like, listen, I don't like rapping just to rap. I don't like telling people how nice I am. <laughs> I want it to be anecdotes. And within, you know, the songs, I want them to be good songs, but I want people to walk away as you peel back the layers, you walk away with something from each song. And so as we set out to do it, like even he was giving me specific like challenges and different things to do. I made sure I kept that focus the whole time Mm. to really put a story within the story. So even in RPM where I'm just rapping Mm -hmm. for a minute and some change, it's things within that. And I had to because I didn't write that to a beat. Like, I wrote that to a click track. <laughs> so he told me to write that to a metronome. So I had to make sure I I had to find things to talk about in order to complete that specific mission. But that was just the goal. I just really wanted to, like I said, take my time, tell stories, and have people be able to take. Everybody may take something different from each story, but you're going to get something from each one what were the challenges like that's super interesting that he gave you challenges <laughs> yeah and, and I needed them at the time because I I was dormant for a while so trying to you know rev the engine back up it took a little bit of creativity 
And he didn't know it at the time. He designed the challenges to get me out of my usual way of doing things. I needed the challenges to help get me going creatively. And so, like I previously stated, RPM, he just called me and was like, okay, I want you to write 32 bars to 85 BPM metronome. And I could have cheated because <laughs> I started to. But then I said, no, I'm going to do, you know, the assignment as it was the challenge as it was issued. Yeah. And so I wrote it to a click track. I recorded it to a click track. And then when I sent it back, he was like, how did you do this to a click track? But you can tell because my pattern switches like four different times within it. And that's because I had nothing. I normally take an instrument within a beat and that's what I use as my guide. I had no guide. Three back, maybe three to go. On the front row, bag of popcorn, soda pop. 50 yard line views, most of y'all sort of pop, sort of sports. Nigga sweet like your girl wearing boy shorts. Competition just exposed the warts. Expose, hey you out of sorts. Press them full court, no the rich. Raise the back, son, raise the tax, extort. Points on the pack, how's your claim about the imports? Who resorts to fiction? The so that was one challenge. Another challenge was tell a story backwards. So that ended up being the cycle. Yes. And my friend, actually partner Sean Don, he gave me the idea when I was asking him about it. He said, why don't you write it backwards from two different perspectives? So I just created one story and took two different perspectives and wrote them backwards. And I had to make them make sense so you knew like it was telling the same story. So that was fun. I had another one, Pray or Pray. He told me to write, pick an older rap song that I like and write to the instrumental. Mm. And I ended up picking DLC's Funky Enough. Well, I couldn't find that instrumental, so I ended up looping up the original sample, <laughs> the Jackson 5 sample, yeah. myself, and wrote to that. And that became Pray or Pray. Mm. It was a couple that didn't end up working out. He had me try rapping like Jay-Z on Jigawatt, mm. like the fast double time flow. That didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're able to admit it though. A lot yeah. of people wouldn't admit as much. So yeah, I tried it. I told him, I said, "Look, man, I don't think this is gonna work." He said, "Nah, just try. It. Trust me." And I did it. And then he was like, "Yeah, no, nah, this ain't gonna work." I said, "I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> My confidence wasn't high on that one." <laughs> but you tried it. It's okay. I really want to talk about too. We talked about actually taking your time writing it. Another thing that sticks out too is the song length and the fact that you were able to make shorter songs, but make them super dope and like you said have storylines and be really concise great songs is incredible was song length something that was conscious or just kind of that's how it went no nah, that's how it went i'm a two verse person by nature i learned how to get everything i need to say out in one verse being in the group so yeah. it's not difficult for me i know for some people it's like i don't i can't i need like three ver I, I don't need three verses mm -hmm. like sometimes I do so much in one verse that when it comes to the second verse, I struggle because I'm like, I done shot my load in the first one. I don't, I don't know what to do. So doing two verses, is that's, that's me. <laughs> Unless I'm telling a story, like the cycle was supposed to have a third verse on it, but I never did it. Mm. As the cops gather around me, I'm focusing on the photo. The man I recognize, the kid I didn't know, I never seen before. Never brought up in the home. I was raised by two parents, no sibling. Before I squeezed the trigger, I was trembling. Use my left hand to stabilize. I let off a round. I let off another. People hit the ground. I hear him scrambling, but I, I think that was the only one that probably would have had three verses. But I just know how to get what I need to get done in a short amount of time. And I know this is hip hop, so it's not a lot of bridges and things of that nature. So I don't need all the fancy stuff. It's hooks and beats and words and get on up out of here, go to the next one. The Cycle is my favorite song. So what was that third verse supposed to be? The idea, I don't know if people got it from listening just from the two verses because even when i went back and listened to it i was mad at myself and i was like oh i need to do a third verse i just didn't have the time to do it and it's supposed to have been the two guys they were brothers but they didn't know um, so that's why whichever one i got killed because i can't remember the verses in my head right now but no when he say the picture who's this guy holding me that's his dad and his dad basically left when he was young his mom told him his dad was dead his dad really lived nearby and that was his basically his half brother who he got into the fight with and killed and that's why i was called the cycle because 
I was supposed to do another verse to basically bring it all together. Mm -hmm. But I just, I ran out of time. I had too much going on. So I just left it as it was. But that was the initial intent of why I would have put a third verse on it, just so you could have really got it. You know, some people may be able to pick it up just by little things in the verses now, but that would have really brought it home. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, the duality in it to be able to tell the story backwards and kind of take the two perspectives like that was already dope. Man, yeah. it's still it's still an incredible song. So the fact that there was going to be bored to it is like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's what my creative writing took a hold of me. Like I actually started off as a creative writer before I started writing raps or songs of any like I wrote stories. And that was part of a idea that I had. Like I was. I watched, oh man, I can't remember the name of it. It was like a, a short mini series that came on HBO recently about the guy who drove his dad taxi into the city, ended up picking somebody up. Like he wasn't supposed to, but he picked somebody up. A girl ended up going to sleep with her. She ended up dead. He got thrown in jail for doing it. Just a quick editor's note, that show was an HBO mini series called The Night Of. I watched that short series on HBO and I was intrigued by it. So I started kind of pinning my own little short, you know, series or whatever. And that came from that. So that song. The idea was there, mm. and and I just bought it over and put it in the song form. I'm excited to watch that. <laughs> it was very good. It was I think it only did like four or six episodes of it, mm. but it was it was real good. I know John Turturro played like the lawyer with the bad eczema on his feet or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And then the features. There are incredible people on this project it's a prayer pray uh that's coco sarai focus actually tapped her for that she working over in uh dre's camp with that song focus had an idea for the hook after he put the actual beat on it since i didn't write it to that beat and i was like okay and he told me the idea for the hook and he was like let me get the person i was like okay and then he told me so i'm gonna try coco and at the time i had never even heard coco sing but i was like okay focus i trust you and when he sent it to me after she did i was like yo this is amazing like i couldn't have it's almost like this is what it was supposed to be, but I didn't know this is what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So she blessed that one. Okay, 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 it's up with his head. Look, we cook rats, don't look back. We don't talk to no feds. In the hood trap, pull the woods back, cruising down south with. With some misfits getting lit, lit, then they go duck 12. Find myself back in them trenches. I'm bad to hop in them fences. I was the lookout for hitters. I'm bad to take what they didn't. Pooh said, load up your ratchet. Check one and kills him, all right. That's a young guy from Atlanta. He was in North Carolina for the last couple of years, basically undergoing development. Another partner of mine, Rich, Nukes Music, they took him under their wing. You know, have been developing them for the past two, three years. And I wanted to give him a shot. Like, and the cool story about it is he ended up telling me after I asked him to do it. He was like, yo, it's so crazy because I was living in Atlanta and I did a coast to coast like one of their shows or whatever and focus was a judge Jeez. and focus told me afterwards was like yeah you got something you just need to be you yeah like you need to find out who you are and be you mm -hmm. but i think you're dope so it was crazy that yeah. i asked him to be on the project yes. because that had happened and i had no idea until i asked him to be on the project yeah. mayweather lean on me no joke blocks pushing Sam to the roof like do this expedition long days and cold nights I roll dice and hold mics the hood would say I'm so nice I'm so New York City they say my name twice ladies and gentlemen survived all the wars in the Bronx my car parked in a spot reserved for veterans stripes on my sleeve cheetah on my team best believe I'm Bronx bombing wiping out your whole regime was living single till I check two Sean Don I've been working with him forever yeah. you know that's my brother uh, uh my partner and um i knew i wanted him on it and that originally had i had two verses on there mm -hmm. and he had one mm -hmm. and focus ended up cutting off my third verse and sean he was mad because he's like yo your third verse was better than your first <laughs> one what's going on but um once focus decided like, he wanted to make it short he 
took that verse off because it originally was the second part of was it the second part of who are they originally no it was the second part of something else but he cut it off so it wasn't the second part anymore so he just kept it like that get to scroll on a stench in the air you need a roll on it's been a while since you had your soul on for so long been blinded by medication and far too many underestimate the situation the streets are burning how long will we watch the flames till the ashes fall down like the rain C.S. Armstrong. C.S. Armstrong. So that was another focus um, guy who was over at, with Dre at the time. The crazy thing about C.S. Armstrong is I didn't know he's gone by various names. Mm-hmm. And he was actually here for a little while recording because he told me, he was like, yeah, man, you probably don't remember me, but I was working with Ninth and them and I did a song with Rhapsody and he sent me the song and I was like, where are you on the song? Because <laughs> it was another name. And that's when I realized, oh, you were going by another name. That song, I wouldn't have put it on there if, if he wouldn't have ended up doing that hook. Like, it's almost like, once again, it was a marriage that had to happen. Like, he brought that song to life. Like, I liked the song when I did it. Mm-hmm. I loved it after mm-hmm. they sent me his vocals back. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Everybody want that new, new. Say that new, new. Play that new, new. Say that new. How you the LS in the world without a passport? Y'all be on that back back. Fork, fork, can't afford, no fork. Silverware, silver lining. At least you got to see how a nigga really. Thurs is on there. That was another focus pick. He was over there in Dre's camp. Yeah. And that's cool because me and Thurs have worked together before. So I was definitely with that. That song was kind of a lighter song compared to the other songs on the project. Mm-hmm. Actually almost didn't make the project, but I, I fought for it. I had to have it. Who are they with Black Soul? That's uh, one of the artists I have signed under management. Folks was like, I'm going to get Black Soul on something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, cool, because I was going to put him on something anyway. I always put him on something. And he ended up doing the second half to that song. And that became like my favorite part mm. of any song on this whole record. That's what I actually wanted to talk about. Like, that switch up is crazy. Yeah, like, and originally he had actual drums in it. Mm-hmm. And... I got used to hearing it, so I went out to L.A. for something, and he played it for me. He had took the drums out, mm. and I was like, hold on, why you take the drums out? <laughs> but then he went back in and added strings to it, mm. and it was just what Black Soul did, the instrumentation, everything about it. Like it just, I just be ready to get past my raps and get to Black Soul's portion, and when the strings come in, it just, it just moves you. It's like a moving piece of music. And even the first part of Who Are They?, that's like the third version. Oh, wow. That's not even the original version because he kept trying to find something that really popped. Mm. And you could really see the, the juxtaposition once the beat changed. Mm. So he was he was just searching for the right thing. And when he played me that one, I was like, yo, that's it. Like, you have to keep that version. So that's that one. Uh, I don't think that I have. I don't think I had any more guests other than Ab Lava. Mm-hmm. Uh Everybody ended up complimenting the project the exact way they needed to compliment the project. Like, I couldn't have planned that any better how it worked out. So good. And then me being the OG Neptune stan, <laughs> got to talk about Ab Live. I need the smell of rose. Underrated, huh? Never hated, huh? Found my place in the sun and was motivated by chasing heels of the greatest and pulling up in that latest paid and full album cover was everything to this young mind, young Aguchi clan. Have you guys known each other for a while? Was this a new thing? Like, how did this track, Roses, happen? So, in two parts. So, Roses originally was a track that I had started. I wrote the hook. I had part of the verse. Because originally, me... Illa J, T3, and my man Vice were supposed to do a project together. And that didn't happen, obviously, and it kind of dissipated quickly. So Focus was like, 
do you want to keep this track? And I said, yeah, like I want to keep it. So we took that and I was just working on it. I just revamped it and I'm focused. He ended up changing the beat because that wasn't even the original beat. So when he sent it back, I'm just listening to it. I'm like, okay, I need somebody else on here. I need somebody else. And I ended up hitting live on Instagram, like, cause we followed each other on Instagram and mutual fans of each other. I just remember he commented on something one day on my page and I was like, oh, live as a fan? Yes. And I just started following him and then, you know, we had talked to each other. And so I ended up hitting him, DMing him. I was like, look, man, I got this joint. Focus did it. I know he knew who Focus was. Man, I'm hearing you on it, man. It would be an honor and a pleasure if you could get on this track. And he said, send it to me. And he sent me his email and phone number. And I sent it. And he hit me back like maybe like an hour or so later. He's like, yo, I got it. This joint is crazy. It's that boom bap hip hop. This is what we need. I got you. He said, tomorrow's my anniversary. But I got you the day after that. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, for sure. And then two days later, he sent it back. And I was like, yo, this... It's this it like it's one of my favorite joints on the record makes me so happy oh, it's so good man 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 and then the title rpm rapper poo music why did you choose that as the title i didn't focus chose it focus chose it <laughs> he had that mark since 2014 like because this whole thing was he wanted to be like 60 rpm and he wanted to do 60 minutes mm. so this was 2014 people so obviously over time, then he was like, okay, 45 RPM. And I was like, listen, man, let's not put no time on it because I do 25, 30 minutes and it'll be nothing. Like, I actually think this project is like 28 minutes. So it's like, don't put no time on it because I can get a lot done in a short amount of time. And people aren't listening to 60 minute projects anymore. Like, that's just too much. So we just took the number off and kept it as RPM. And it actually worked out because I actually started going by RPM when I DJ. So instead of just saying DJ, Big Poo or whatever, I just say RPM. I have too much respect for DJs, so I would never call myself a DJ at this moment in time. I haven't earned that title yet. I'm more of a selector, if you will. So I just go by RPM when I'm, you know, going out and doing gigs. And so it worked out in that way. But RPM is just he's his whole thing was like, I just want it to be, you know, music that represents you. And so that's what I tried to do with each song was just represent different facets of who I am as a person and as an artist. And you did it. Goodness. <laughs> and then the album artwork. Very classic, rustic, got almost like the picture frame. What was the idea behind that? So we had the single artwork for Prayer Pray first. And uh, my man Gustavo Soto, he did the single and the album artwork. When I told him what the title was, and I don't even think I let him hear the song when he did Prayer Pray. I just kind of told him what the idea of it was. And so he ended up coming with the lions and stuff, like in the old church, like, you know, devouring the carcass. You could tell it was a church. It just looked like it hadn't been used. And it was behind the pulpit. It looked like it could have been a picture frame. And so I kept looking at that. So when it was time to do the album, uh, my guy Tobias Rose, he had took some photos for me. I took one of the photos. I said, listen, I got an idea. You see that picture frame behind the pulpit? I want it to be like my picture was supposed to be in that picture frame. So make everything rustic like you did with the single cover. Take that frame, put this picture in it. Boom. That's the album cover. And that's what we did. It's easy, but it's not. It clicks, but you have these very talented, creative people in positions where it's like, oh, okay, now this clip. I wanted to have some symmetry. Like, I didn't want to have the single cover look one way and then the album cover look totally different, like they didn't even belong together. So once I like, really studied the single, because we had that one first, I was able to take something from that and make it work. And then it was called... RPM rapper poo music so I was like I have to be on the cover and I really don't like being on my covers but I was like there's no way I can get around not being on my cover for this one oh, man. it's true and then anything else you want to tell the people about RPM y'all can go check it out right now please 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 go check it out it's just a good piece of music you know I think people will really appreciate it and don't take up too much of your time like Fonte says you know I make music for people with shit to do <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you could put this on and you will run through it before you know it. 
Um, you can put it on to work out. It's the clean version is out, so you can actually play it in the car with your kids. Um, if you don't want them listening to curse words, which I actually don't curse a lot on this album. That was another thing, like focus when he makes music for himself. His thing is like no cursing in the music. He's like, yo, we're creative enough. We don't have to use curse words. And so when we started making the project, I asked him, I said, listen, I just want to ask you, like, it's no problem if if you feel this way, but cursing or nah? <laughs> and he said, listen, I don't want to limit you. And I said, it's not limiting me. I just want to know. He's like, listen, I don't want to limit you. So you do what you feel you need to do. So I made it a point of not to go crazy. Like, so when I curse on this project, it's for a purpose. Like, it's not me just cursing the curse. Like, and I actually carry that over and I try to do that period now when I write this. Like, if I'm going to use any sort of word that you can't play on the radio, it's going to be for a purpose. It's going to be like, okay, if you take that word out, like, the point is not going to be as emphatic. So that's what I try to do, but we still made a clean version so people can play. So please go check it out. Let me know what you think. Check it out. 28 minutes out of your day. And like I said, it's so well done and so cohesive, but there's so many layers to it and just the storytelling and it doesn't feel like 20. Like, I feel like there's two different people. I talk about this all the time. There's two different people. There's those surface level people who just kind of listen. And then there's those people who really love music and really dig into it. So I think it's a perfect marriage for both of those. Because like you said, it's only 28 minutes. But to the deep people, it doesn't feel like 28 right, minutes. Right. Like, you you gave us the whole thing in just a little bit of time. And that speaks to you and what you've been saying this whole time. Like, you can do that. You can get everything out yeah. quickly. That's so dope. It got to pack a powerful punch when you cut the filler out you know you can get straight to it and uh oh i forgot a feature on there too i'm i, I just thought about it focus is actually featured yeah. on there yeah uh, he's feet on getaway rainstorms time to get away show me how to get away show me how to get away show me how to get away no time to be weak by now, no rest for the big guy now. Yeah, I show you the way, I give you the play. I told him like I, he had to do a hook on the project. He's very talented. He can rap, he can sing, obviously he produces. He let me hear the beat and then he asked me like what do you feel from this beat? And I told him what I was thinking. And he ended up doing a hook. And then I wrote the verses after he did the hook. Yeah, so I didn't want to forget Focus is also featured on here. No, his multi-talented self, goodness gracious. Man, anything else you want to tell the people? Ah, man, just uh, thank y'all for all the support. You know, please go support Loot, Black Soul, T. Smith, Praise. Go listen to RPM 100,000 times, please. It's the streaming world. <laughs> please i need all the streams i can get we don't make much off streams please i just i need the awareness but uh nah just thank y'all for listening thank y'all for you know supporting you know since 2003 appreciate it thank you so much thank uh, you for all the stories uh, thank you all the knowledge all just even being able to say when things didn't work out and being able to tell those stories like i appreciate that so thank you for sitting down with thank me. you I super thank appreciate you. it i appreciate you no problem and thank you so much for checking out this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever you're listening on. And then reach out to me. Let me know what your favorite part was or just say hello. I'm on Twitter at Special Says and on Instagram it's at Special Says as well. There's going to be a bunch of links in the description for you to check out. So if you want more, check out those. And as always, this episode is dedicated to Marlon. Do what you can to stop senseless acts of gun violence.